welcome a landmark decision in Australia. Its highest court has upheld the world's toughest law on cigarette promotion. It means that all logos will be removed from packets sold. Now, the measure was introduced by the Australian government earlier this year, but four tobacco companies challenged the law, saying that it was unconstitutional. Duncan Kennedy has more from Sydney. The decision means that from December, Australia will become the first country in the world to have logo-free cigarette packaging. Instead, all packets will come in plain olive green colours. The only imaging will be graphic photos of people suffering from cancer-related illnesses. The government's Attorney General said 15,000 people a year die from smoking-related illnesses and that the court's decision was a victory in the battle against smoking. We have taken on big tobacco and we have won. And this is good news for every Australian parent who worries about their child picking up an addictive and deadly habit. The new plain cigarette packs are designed to be less appealing, especially to young people. The company's name will only appear in small print. But several of the biggest companies, including British American Tobacco, Philip Morris and Imperial Tobacco, have fought plain packaging, saying it robs them of their established brands and logos without compensation and may actually encourage a criminal market in fake or imported cigarettes. The move to bring in plain packaging here is being watched right around the world. Britain, some states in America, New Zealand, India, they've all shown an interest in what's going on. And whilst Australia might be a relatively small cigarette market, the tobacco companies know that losing here could lead to a deluge of legislation elsewhere in their really big markets. One company, Philip Morris, said it still had a strong case to take to the World Trade Organization. And as such, there's still a long way to go before all the legal questions about plain packaging are fully explored. But for now, legally, cigarette companies' last platform to advertise their products has been denied them. Duncan Kennedy, BBC News, in Sydney. How effective will the new plain cigarette packets be in changing the habits of smokers? It's a question many are asking. I'm joined by now by Dr. Paul Harrison. Now, he's a senior lecturer on consumer behaviour and advertising at Deakin University in Melbourne. Um, Dr. Harrison, thank you very much for joining me. It does make you wonder, we've just seen these very graphic images, um, warnings. How effective are they in deterring smokers? Well, on their own, they're not super effective, but what they do is that they reduce the familiarity, they have an effect um, across the board. And, and one of the critical things, I guess, about even going down to plain paper packaging is that it's not the single item or the single variable that's going to affect behaviour, but what it does is it reduces the likelihood that people will take up smoking or that people who are just new smokers will continue to smoke because it reduces that familiarity with the brand and the connections that people have with that brand. And of course, then, if it, if it deters new smokers, all the better, when well, it comes mm. to the health authorities at least. But what about those existing smokers who are already in the habit of this, who are firmly addicted? That is a really tricky one, Naga. Um, the, the bottom line is that all marketing does have an effect and the arguments that, that uh, plain paper packaging won't have an effect um, are, are erroneous in a way. But the, the harder it is to convert a person, and I, I, I see this as the product is non-smoking, the harder it is to get a person to stop being a smoker and the heavier the, the, the smoking that they, they do, um, the more likely it is that, uh, that other uh, elements will influence their behaviour. So as you normalise non-smoking, it becomes harder and harder to be a smoker. And in Australia, for example, we went from, I think it was 75% of the population in 1945 were smokers, and now it's down to 17, 22% um, for females and, ma and males. So it, it's the heavy duty smokers that, um, that will be the next cap off the rank, but it won't have a huge effect on them in the short run. And Paul, what happens then from the view of the tobacco companies? How do they fight back if they can't put their brands on these packets? Well, as Duncan, um, Duncan's report said, it's this idea that they'll go, go into new markets. And one of the issues is that they really don't want the precedent to happen here in Australia. And they, they come up with different ways to get their brand out in the marketplace. So some cigarette companies, for example, have gone into um, using their brand in perfume or they might sponsor in different ways. And so they're very clever and they know how to do marketing and they've been doing it for a long time. Um, what they'll do is as the market in Australia, I guess, reduces, they'll look for new markets. 
they'll work around government re regulation in those new markets and also just get their brand out there as much as possible in other ways. It's going to be interesting watching um, to see how this market develops. Dr Paul Harrison, thank you very much for your thoughts. It's a pleasure, thank you. Mm -hmm.